A fourth thing that static is used for is to define static data members of a class. If you declare a data member in a class to be static, that means, as should not be a surprise, that that data member is stored in the static data area. And importantly, what this means is that that data member is going to exist even when there are no objects of the class currently existing in the program. The static data member is going to be accessible to any member functions and friends in the class, just like non-static data members are. Now, as a picky technical detail, it turns out that you have to define a static data member outside of any of the class member functions, which you typically do in the code file for the class. Okay, so such a static data member is often called a class variable because the data member applies to the class as a whole as opposed to what are often called instance variables, which are the individual non-static data members that are contained within each object of the class. So let's take a look at this in the context of the employee class that we've been working with in previous lectures. Here's how we've been doing things, shown here on slide 11. We have our employee class. In the employee class, there is a data member ID, which is const. Each employee object has its own ID within it. Supposedly, these ID numbers should be unique for the different employee objects that we have in our program. But we don't have any way of enforcing that currently because our constructor for the employee object takes the employee ID number as the first argument and consequently this class, this employee class, is relying on outside code, relying on the application code to provide a unique ID number for each employee object that gets created. And this is not a great design. Ideally, the employee class itself would control ID numbers for employees and ensure that each employee does in fact get a unique ID number. So we're showing on slide 12 the use of a static data member to help us do exactly this. Notice that on slide 12 we've revised our constructor for the employee class so that only the initial name and the initial rate are passed into the constructor for the employee. We've established a static int data member called nextID that is shared by all objects of the employee class and that in fact will even exist if there are no objects of the employee class currently in our program. In the code file shown here on slide 13, this is a picky technical detail that's easy to forget, but when you have a data member declared static in your class, you have to provide a definition of that static data member in your code. That is, in the code file that implements the class. So here we have that next ID is a member of the employee class. It is an int, and its initial value is 1. So that means that when we compile this code, link it into a program, and run the program, as soon as the program starts running, there is going to be this next ID int variable in the static data area that's part of the employee class and that is already initialized with 1 even before any employee objects are created. Then notice how we've modified our constructor to make use of this next ID variable. Instead of initializing the ID data member for an employee object, with an argument that's passed into the employee constructor, what we're doing is we're initializing the ID data member from the next ID static data member. And we're post incrementing next ID after we've used next ID's original value as the value of the ID for the current employee object. Consequently, each time this constructor gets called, it's going to initialize the ID of the employee object that's currently being created to the next available ID 
and it will then increment next ID so that the next time we create an employee, that employee will be guaranteed to have a unique ID. Here on slide 14 is a small application to illustrate how the next ID static data member works within our employee class. We've got a main function here and when we compile and execute this code because the next ID data member is static it is stored in the static data area and initialized with one even before the main function is called. Then when the main function is called we have an employee object Alex in here that we're constructing with Alex as the initial name and 57.25 as the initial rate. Now in the constructor as we saw here on slide 13 the ID for Alex is going to be initialized with 1 that is the initial value of next ID and after Alex's ID has been initialized to 1 next ID will be post incremented to become 2 Alex's name data member is going to be initialized with the string Alex and Alex's rate data member is going to be initialized with 57.25 now we go on to creating this employee object Bob again in the instructor the ID for this object that we're constructing Bob is going to be initialized with 2 the current value of next ID and then the current value of next ID will be post incremented to become 3 Bob's name will be initialized with the string Bob Bob's rate will be initialized with 63.10 so we now have two employee objects Alex with an ID of 1 and Bob with an ID of 2 and the next available ID is going to be 3 Carl is a manager a manager is a kind of employee for the manager constructor we have made a revision so that we do not specify an initial ID number all we specify is the name rate job title and budget so the manager constructor which we're not showing will first invoke the employee base class constructor passing down Carl and 66.75 Carl's ID will be initialized with 3 after which next ID is incremented to 4 Carl's name will be the string Carl Carl's rate will be 66.75 at that point the base class employee constructor is finished and so we complete the initialization of the manager part title is initialized with boss and budget since we've specified a zero value as I recall is initialized with half a million dollars okay so we now have two employee objects Alex and Bob and a manager object which is a kind of employee Carl whose ID numbers are 1 2 and 3 respectively when we run the program the output is shown on slide 15 alex.print will invoke the employee print function printing out employee number one name Alex rate 57.25 bob.print also invokes the employee print function employee number two name Bob rate 63.1 carl.print will invoke the manager print function because we overrode the print function in the manager class so we get out manager information and contained within that manager information is the employee information employee number three name Carl rate 66.75 followed by the title and the budget for Carl 